another video kind of a different one today i kind of uh hinted at this um got these cards a lot of these in the mail yesterday and i got some more today these are the 1990 premier edition kingpins cards these are bowling cards um not a sport that you really hear anybody talk about um there just isn't a lot of bowling cards out there i think that's part of it um but you have sports like tennis and, and racing and all kinds of sports. And you look at these athletes and they're, uh, you know, they're key rookie cards and they're just worth crazy amounts of money. And then you look at the bowling cards and you say, well, why is a, why is an Earl Anthony or a Walter uh, Ray Williams Jr. or a, uh, a Pete Weber, why are these cards so darn cheap? Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, and when it doesn't really make sense, I just buy everything. So... Picked a bunch of these up, these sets. Um, paid about 13 bucks a piece on average. Um, some of them you can get auctions or you know, buy an hour best offer. You can put in an offer, get them for a little bit cheaper kind of thing. And you know, you can also buy the uh, boxes, uh, which had 36 packs. We do have one of those on the way. Uh, I think those are a good value as well because you will get probably about three sets, um, being that there's 300 cards in the set and 360 cards in the box. So, yeah, I just think this is a potential market that could, you know, definitely see some growth um, if, if, if anybody catches on. Um, the PSA pop reports on these are very, very low. I looked at, I looked on there and, you know, even the big, the big names in here, there's only 10, 20, 30 of them that have even been graded. And if you even see one that is up for sale, it's very, very short supply. So, um, definitely going to be controlling the market on this one <laughs> we got brett in here loofers what's going on guys appreciate you coming so yeah this was just kind of one of those things where i was just kind of sitting uh and uh contemplating and i thought in my head like hey bowling you know i like bowling i i bowled for 30 years plus years um started bowling actually right around 1990 um i was on a league that year but um, yeah, and you see a lot of these guys on TV and stuff over the years. Some of these guys are still still bowling to this day, still competing. Um, I mean, Pete Weber, everybody knows him for the, who do you think you are, I am. <laughs> that famous, uh, famous quote there. Um, so, just pretty epic. These boxes were kind of open. They told me about a few of, that, a few of these because the, the glue adhesive or whatever kind of came undone. Um... It looks like card number one is in the back, which is the Earl Anthony card. Nice, crisp card. Check that out. Um, I think maybe the only issue we're going to have on these is maybe the centering. And if any of them get corner dings from just maybe the boxes, you know, being 30 plus years old. Maybe they got kind of banged around a little bit. Um, but it's got that cool bowling... Um, the bowling lanes kind of look on the back um so earl anthony one of the greats right there so i'll set that right there and i guess we'll kind of just do it from the back end here then a lot of these guys i'm not going to know at all i mean these might have been big names back in the 90s or whatever and some of them are just old timers and stuff so if there's any names in here that i should be looking for Steve Martin, not the actor. Don McCune. Um, I, I have seen a few of these guys that have graded cards, and they, they don't really even sell. Um, like I said, you're kind of looking for the big names in here. And that's basically it. Chris Warren. Also, I think Pete Weber's dad is in here. Dick Weber. Some of these are looking a little off-center at the top to bottom. Jim Godman. Just on this first bat box, we'll kind of go through a little slower. But yeah. Bowling. One of my favorite movies is that that movie with, you know, was it Kingpin? Kingpins? Don Carter. The man. We had a Don Carter lanes not far um, from where I lived, used to live. So I wonder, wonder if that has any value. Billy Walden. 
So I think the, the bigger names I think might be towards the front or towards the back in this case. The cards are all basically backwards for some reason. Just how they, there's the Walter Ray Williams Jr. right there. When I Google it, it said that Walter Williams Ray Jr. was the best bowler all, of all time, but um, some might say it's Earl Anthony. Card 51, so looking very crisp. Walter Ray, so he's right at the, pretty much almost the middle of the pack there. Dave Moser, I think I've heard of him. Ron Williams, Ski, Form Ski. Steve Reich, Don Johnson. Like, I think this guy had a graded card, but like I said, some of them, they just weren't selling at all. But if you look at the bigger names, there's a few graded ones that got, and a lot of people would take these to the games or whatever, and they would get, get them signed. So you see some signed copies there. That's a weird card. It's like, <laughs> gotta turn it sideways. Jim. So, still looking for a few players here. There's Dick Weber. David Ferrero. There's the Pete Weber. There's the man. That's right. I did it. <laughs> nice looking card. Yeah, I've seen a PSA 9 on this one go for like 100 bucks is what it looks like. And like I said, the population reports are very, very low. So it's not like there's a ton of these on the market. I think that's something that could definitely stunt the growth because people have no comps to basically judge what the price should be. So when one does come up for sale, it might come up for sale for around the same price as the last one and you don't have that same growth as if you had a a bunch of these on the market and they were constantly changing hands. I feel like the the prices could fluctuate up more. Still looking for, um, what's his face here? He should be coming up. Norm Duke, there he is. Got the Norm Duke, still playing, I'm pretty sure. All these guys are like in their 50s now. Um, so, Norm Duke, it's not a bad one. I think on all these, the great, I think there was between 10 and like 30 graded somewhere in there. Um, 1964, yeah, so he'd be 56, almost 57. Uh, Benoit, Hugh Miller, Barry Asher. And that's basically it. I think, um, like I said, I think the main four are going to be these ones right here. If there's any other ones, let me know if you guys are experts in bowling. <laughs> uh, Joel, what's going on? Uh, Loofers, you didn't miss much. We just pulled out these guys here. We got Norm Duke, Pete Weber, Walter Ray Williams Jr., Earl Anthony. I think these are the guys I'm going to be grading. Um, so, yeah, these how, this is how these sets come. Most of them are sealed, but I did have some boxes that were the adhesive. Kind of just went bad on them, I guess. I don't know. But surprisingly, these are coming out very, very sharp. They feel like just like they were brand new. Um, yeah, if you guys haven't checked it, Brett did do his uh, PSA submission reveal on his channel. It's pretty good. Yeah, these are looking just really, really solid cards. Probably going to get a lot of nines out of these. Um, it's good stuff. Let's see. We already know where the Walter Ray is. And... Um, Pete Weber. And Norm Duke. So, very nice. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, like I said, my thought process on this was these are like the greatest bowlers of all time. Um, there's not a lot of this stuff out there. I mean, go on eBay and try to find these cards. Like, there's only a handful of these out there. Um, same with the graded. I mean, there's only a handful of these cards graded. So anybody that's into bowling wants a you know a rookie card essentially of one of their favorite.
bowlers or one of the best bowlers of all time. Um, they're going to try to find these, and there's only going to be so many of them available. And once I have, you know, a whole stack of these graded, and I'm the only only one selling, you know, a graded copy of one of these guys, who knows where these could potentially go. I'm optimistic about it. Um, but like I said, at $13 a box, heh, you can't really lose money. Um, I mean, just grading these and getting nines out of all of them, I'll make a few hundred bucks at least, bare minimum. Um, so, kind of my thought process on that. Also, we got some more uh, other sports stuff that's going to be coming in the mail. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, I'm just buying into different stuff. Just trying to find some good values out there. Some good cards to buy for, you know, reasonable. When you see a card that's selling for a lot of money, graded, and then you can buy it straight out of the box and open it. And definitely some money to be made there. So, and one of the main questions I get a lot of times is, you know, what do you do with your, what do you do with the common stuff? What do you do with the stuff? Like, what do you do with all the bulk stuff? If your focus is the bulk stuff, you're not going to be very successful in this business. Your main focus should be on the stuff that makes money. Um, it doesn't really matter what you do with all the bulk, the bulk junk. You can toss it in the dumpster and you're still going to make money. Um, you can sell it locally. You can sell it in lots on eBay. Do whatever you want with it. I don't like to waste a lot of time with it just because it's. I only spend time on stuff that makes money. Um, but, uh, yeah, these are looking really good. Really sharp, man. So, hopefully I can pull one PSA 10 on all of these at least and I'll just hold on to them for, and see how they do over, you know, over the years. Because you just never know. I mean, look at tennis. You got a Serena, a Serena Williams PSA 10 that sold for like fourteen thousand dollars. You know, what's what's stopping a Walter Ray or a Pete Weber being worth ten, fifteen thousand dollars? You know, with a pop, pop ten, let's say, on a PSA 10. What what's what's the potential there? You know what I mean? That's what I look at. <clears throat> But like I said, I do have a box of these as well, which is 36 packs, 10 cards, I believe, per pack. Um, so I'm definitely going to open that and see how we do on that as well. Because even if you're paying a few bucks a card for like the, the ones you want, like three, four bucks a card, I still think that's a steal. Uh, which is basically what you're paying on, the, on these. If you're pulling four cards out and you're paying $13 a box... You're basically paying like three dollars a card on the on the main ones, and then all the other cards are just free. That's what I, you know, that's what I look at. But you can break it down however you want. Um, and then on the thirty-six pack box, if you get three of each guy, that's twelve cards. And if you're paying thirty, forty dollars for the box, you're basically right around that three dollars per card again. So. Not too shabby. Nineteen ninety. It's just crazy how there's stuff out there like this that nobody's really talking about. I think there's nostalgia there too because you got pretty much with everything. Um, after thirty years or so, kind of people come back around and they want to relive that nostalgia factor. So. That's part of the reason I think you got, you know, Marvel cards are going crazy and wrestling cards from the 80s and 90s are going crazy. See, the adhesive on that one was perfectly fine. That's why those boxes were still sealed. This, I just pulled this out of the mailbox so the cards are still cold. <laughs> so, kind of a, a different video. Like I said, a little boring maybe to some. But I just want to open people's eyes on this stuff because... Um, I think as, as people kind of look in and try to see, like, oh, okay, what, what, what's the possibility on these, you know? And maybe a year or two years from now, you can look back on this video and be like, holy crap, you got those boxes for $13. Now they're this much money. I, I get that all the time on my videos. 
that's the one thing I notice. Anytime uh, something goes crazy and the market goes crazy on something, I get start getting a lot of views on that. And then I get just comments up the butt. Wait, you paid this? You paid that much? Oh my God, those are going for this much now. It's like, well, yeah, you got to be early to the market. You know, you got to see this stuff before it happens. So you can capitalize on it. Be the one there that's got the cards ready to go to make the money to, you know, capitalize on the market. So, um, loofers. Uh, I do. I play disc golf. I've uh, been doing that for 20 years, almost, well, 18 years. Um, and I bowl, but I haven't bowled in a while. Um, I was on a league a couple summers ago. And it was fun, um, but I haven't, uh, it's been a couple years since I bowled. My, my hands kind of shrunk because I lost some weight and my bowling ball just wasn't fitting properly anymore. <laughs> I didn't feel like having a real re-drilled and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, of course, the shutdown and everything happened, so I haven't been bowling since 2019. Um, but I do like to bowl. That's, that's a fun sport. I like just sports that are more individual kind of things. I, I like some team sports, but I mean, we grew up playing, playing basketball and doing all that. That was a lot of fun, but um, but yeah, nowadays I don't, I don't do a lot of sports other than disc golf, I guess, and bowling. I was on a baseball team when I was younger, actually, 1990, and then I got on a bowling league, and then I was on bowling leagues a little bit growing up, um, then I got, I was into chess, I was on the chess team for one year, got out of that, and then I started skateboarding, <clears throat> and then I did that until I was about 20, and then started disc golfing at that time. So, yeah, I'm liking these cards, guys. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, like I said, it's going to be different, but I'm going to have a PSA order here with, like, 50 of these cards in it, and it's it probably won't pop till the end of the year, so it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out by the end of the year. I just think there's not going to be a lot of these on the market. Like I said, there's not a lot graded. You very rarely see, probably are going to see them, them come up for sale, but... I have checked the sold comps and I have seen some cards that sold probably within the last month and it's like, I feel like the market's kind of it's wanting to trend up, but there just isn't enough on the market to cause it to trend up. And those cards had a bend to it. Hopefully they're not. Okay, it was just two cards. Thank God. It's two cards at the end there that had kind of a bend up. Ooh, that one's damaged too. So, it's going to happen. You're going to get a few damaged cards in there. It's not the end of the world. Like I said, these were so... It's not like I'm paying tons of money for these. These are like $13 a box. So... Worth the gamble. But yeah, the cards at the end are probably going to be the ones that... Take the hit on the damage more than likely. Um, which is going to be the uh, Earl. Um, and these cards in the middle hopefully are in good shape. Pete Weber. Norm. And the Walter Ray. All right. Yeah, that one took a pretty good hit on the corners and stuff. So, yeah, not the end of the world. Not worried about it. And I did look for singles on some of these, and I found, like, two or three. <laughs> like, they're very, very tough to find them. And it's crazy that they're only a few dollars a piece. It's like, wait a minute, there's only how many on the market, and they're, like, $3 cards? How does that even make sense? But... Like I said, when it doesn't make sense, I just buy everything. Buy it all. Own the market. Like, I think that's a cool card. I think that's a cool card. Like, I don't know. You tell me. Uh, Carson, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Who do you think you are? I am. <laughs> oh, jeez. D-Man Vlogs is going on. Um... Yeah, it's everybody knows that saying. Any, anybody that's watched bowling, Carson's a bowler as well. Him and I've played against each other. My Lead Nation, what's going on? 
it's a fun sport and I you know it's crazy that these cards are so darn dirt cheap well that card like stood up for a second there that's a checklist card let's see if this one took a ding oh that one looks pretty pretty darn good pretty good Ooh, never mind that corner got dinged son of a well, I'll sleep anyways corner got pressed on that one See if I can get right to the Ray Williams card. Nope. Close. Let's see how many cards off we were. About seven, eight cards off. Pete Weber. And Norm. What about you, Carson? You know, you know Norm Duke? Or Walter Ray? These these names ringing a bell. I was watching these guys compete just a couple of years ago, it seems like. I don't know if they're still touring or what. That's the thing about bowling. Is you got guys that are bowling into their like 50s. Maybe even 60s. It just depends. Still on the competitive you know, level. So, yeah. We're opening, I think, nine boxes altogether. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe eleven boxes, something like that. And um, I got a few more on the way as well, but um, they just didn't show up yet. But yeah, if there's any other sports that you guys think I should look into, yeah, the Earl Anthony's are getting dinged. That one got comp completely messed up, so. That, that might be just a card that's just tougher to grade because it's right at the end there. But I'm surprised these cards are super... See just how white they are. And they're just like perfectly crisp. Pack fresh. I guess a few of them were not so white. <laughs> Difference in uh, maybe the environment they were in, who knows. Boxing cards, yeah. Uh, the uh, Mike Tyson has gone crazy in price. And uh, Muhammad Ali... That's the thing, like most of these markets are already tapped into to where these cards are like thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. And yet you can buy one of the best of all time for like $3. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, you know? Doesn't make sense. And it's not like these are common. It's not like there's thousands of these out there, you know what I mean? I'm, I mean, I'm sure there probably maybe is. Maybe somebody's got a whole case of these sitting in their basement or something, but... You go on the open market and it's not like you can find like countless number of these, you know what I mean? Just you guys watching this video or just putting this video out there might completely shift the market just because it's there's just not a lot of them out there, you know? Um, ah, that one got a dinged corner. Dog on it. Looks good on the front, then you flip it around. It's got that little pushed in corner. I'm sure some of the other ones were like that as well. Um, and I just didn't notice it when I was looking at him. But I think that card might be the tough card to grade. That one was good. That one was good. Good, good. That one might be a little soft. So. Wrestling cards. Yeah, I am. I did buy some wrestling cards. Those are, those are on the way. Um, once again, if you want the key, the big cards in wrestling, they're thousands of dollars. So. Um, but yeah, I've, there's, I've got a set coming that's pretty exciting. There's a bunch of Hulk Hogan's and some other names. I'm not going to throw them out there yet. I just kind of want to surprise you guys with what, what box I picked up because it's a pretty good box. I paid, you know, hundreds of dollars for it. Um, but there's some pretty nice cards in there. So we're going to be opening, opening that on the channel as soon as that comes. 
But yeah, I definitely I bought into wrestling. I got the 85 Tops box a couple years back, and those have you know exploded in price. You got the Tops Hulk Hogan cards and all the other names in there. I bought that box for under 300 bucks. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's well over a thousand bucks now. Um, one more box to open. Uh, welcome to the chat, Colleen. Sorry. Um, man, hopefully I can... <clears throat> hopefully we can start finding some more cards here soon. Um, I know uh, Prism Basketball is coming out here. See another one. Pushed in Dean Corner. So that Earl Anthony is going to be really tough. It's about half of them are damaged. Because it's that first card in the box. So it just the corner gets pushed up. I don't know. Like I said, if there's any other good, like really good names in here. I'm sure there is, but... You know, with some of these being really not even worth that much money, that I'm not going to be, you know, grading them unless I think there's a good value in there. All right. Pete Weber. But I'll have to look at the PSA pop reports again and see what cards are getting graded. One big stack of junk common cards. There's also uh, female bowlers, and there's a set, uh, and I have that coming, and it's got the number one female bowler in it. I actually just bought it because there was one of these boxes with it, and I was, and I looked into it, and I was like, oh, well, wait a minute, she's the best female bowler of all time, so that one might be getting graded. So we'll probably do do a uh, video on those as well when those come. What company made these? Good, good uh, call, Brett. Um, Kingpins, 1990 Collect a Card Corporation. So. I don't even know if they're still around. Official cards of the Professional Bowlers Association. PBA. Yes, Colleen, golf cards are a thing. You got Tiger Woods cards that are crazy, crazy prices. I mean, his Upper Deck Rookie, which there's a population of thousands on that card. That was over a thousand bucks. I think it's around like 700. Came back down to like 500 and now it's back on the rise. Um, so yeah, golf cards are a thing. That's a thing, like there's no... Like a sport like this, bowling, why is it, Why are these cards so cheap? Whereas you see any other sport and the cards are like crazy through the roof, you know what I mean? Uh, maybe these cards were just waiting for somebody to buy them out and, and then it, it just takes somebody like catching on to this, you know what I mean? And some cards getting on the market and getting sold and the prices are moving up and then people start talking about it. And then you're already late to the party. And so I am early to the party. <laughs> so pretty stoked. Um, let me know what you guys saw of the video. Different kind of video, I know. Um, I just kind of it, it popped in my head. I'm like, buy these. And then I looked them up and they're cheap and did all the research. And I, I'm like, this is a no brainer. I'm just going to buy them all. So there's some, there's some still on the market. I didn't buy like every single one, but. I got enough of a supply here to where I can make some money. And uh, there's still some out there for some other people to snag them up. If you think it's a good you think it's a good investment or whatever. Um, movie card sets from the 90s and 80s. Yeah, some of those can have some value um, too. But I think a lot of them are, you know, still pretty cheap. Um, so I'll be looking these over and see which ones are going to grade. And all that good stuff, but pretty nice. I mean, 11 Pete Weber's, 11 Norm Dukes, 11 Walter Ray's, and then the Earl Anthony's. There's probably only half of them are going to grade. Um, and like I said, we got a box coming, and, and we'll probably do that on the channel as well. And then once I send these into PSA, you guys will be able to see what I'm sending and all that stuff, so... Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a good weekend. We got some more tops 2021 uh, hanger boxes. We're going to do those tomorrow probably. Have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.